find and replace uh, is a tool in MicroStrategy that allows you to do a replacement of different properties or items within reports or projects. It can be utilized by the developer or by the admin. We will see the different options available to us. So I'm going to load up my MicroStrategy desktop. And uh, this has been available in early versions of MicroStrategy and new versions as well. So it hasn't changed much. Uh, first of all, you want to make sure that your admin has allowed you to do that. And uh, to enable it from an admin perspective, it is simply the project configuration, advanced, and they have to enable find and replace. They can also enable deleting of object dependencies. Uh, which can be related to find and replace because typically these two kind of go hand in hand. So you have a find and replace and a delete object that can be enabled by the admin. Now, most of you will not have these two enabled because these can cause a lot of problems if you don't know what you're doing or you make errors because, as we know, deletion of object dependencies or replacement of object is final. You cannot go back and undo what you made so it could cause a lot of damage if you don't know what you're doing okay so you can ask your admin to enable them if we really need these two options the delete one also requires one more step and let's open our project what it requires from you is to go your preferences and object deletion this option will not show up here if you, that one is not enabled and then you say, okay, uh, yeah, true, I do want to enable deletion. So you enable it for yourself, and there's a log file that you can specify, okay? Again, all deletions are final, so you better be ca careful about what you're doing, especially when you're deleting dependencies and you're not sure what dependencies you're deleting. Again, like I said, most of you will not have that enabled, but if you do, then you, you have to be careful about it. So the find and replace is under Tools. For a project that has it enabled, it brings up this wizard, and the wizard allows you to do to select one of these categories to modify. So the categories are auto style, report options, graph preferences, metric formatting, graph fonts, export object. Now, there's few choices. You can sp manually select which objects you want to change it for. So you go here and choose. A report for example because this is an auto style you can choose a report or a template you select it and here it is now you need to it just because it's right here doesn't mean you're you've selected it you have to update summary this is where you select and deselect the operation okay you could also if you have a search result, you can search or you can create a search to search for specific objects if you don't want to do it manually, if you have a lot. Or you can say, oh yeah, I want it to operate. I want to change all of those with accounting, for example, to a new auto style. And this is your new auto style, let's say Safari. So say everything that has accounting. But again, if you hit replace, not it's only going to operate on this one. You have to always update summary before you operate here. So this one is the result of our first search, not this one right here, okay? And I don't wanna hit update summary because it is gonna take a long time to search for auto styles. It's, it's slower when there's a lot of items. But let's show another operation, report data options, okay? Report data options, again, all of them are gonna be the same. You're gonna either choose manually search or apply to all in some sense. Okay, and then here's the replace with report data options. So what you can do, you can replace the null property, whether it's at the aggregation, missing, etc. You can also replace the drilling. You can modify the page by and choose between original layout and tabular for mobile. So these are some of the, what I call cosmetic or actually functional properties that you have for your report. They're not going to modify your SQL, etc. They're just going to modify how your report is displayed. So, again, when you apply this, it's not going to apply to all. It's going to apply to either the manual, this, or all if you selected it. When does this come in handy? If you have a new request that says all nulls should be replaced by, say, dash dash or NA, 
throughout all your environment or throughout a subset. This is where it comes in handy. You don't want to go to each template and each report and do it manually. You can come and do it here, okay? Uh, one other thing here is the graph references. You can replace it by the preferences set on a different graph. So let's say you had a graph and you colored it and you made the fonts a different, uh, you know, a different font you're using in the in the axis, etc. So you created this custom graph with all these different options, and you want to apply it to all your graphs or a subset of graphs. So you don't want to modify each of those, say, five graphs uh, separately. You do it to one, and you apply all. And I have to warn you, not all of the preferences will be set. These are the ones that will be applied. So everything here can be spread across from one graph to another or manually set here. So you can select a bunch of graphs and say, okay, I want them all to have a certain layout, a certain size, certain type, certain colors. Again, this will override everything you have in your selected options. Again, selecting manually, all, or a search. And again, just because you search, you apply for a search, unless it shows up here and you select it, it's not going to operate. So here, that's what I'm, so let's do this. Let me show you what I mean. So here's the reports. Let's say I apply to these two, okay? Now, they're still not here, which means I can't replace yet. Update the summary. There they are. I can replace. So if I change the graph options or I say set it as a different graph, you know, let's say I set it as a different graph. See if there's anyone here. Don't know. I have to look for a valid type, which is a graph. But for demo purposes, since I didn't find one easily, let's assume this was the setting. So I want to apply this one to my gauge. I select my report. And this is one that the replace will operate on, okay? Or I do this and I manually select the preferences and apply. Like I said, it's not going to replicate, in this case, everything in my report up to my gauge, but it'll replicate this subset of properties across, okay? And you can modify which preferences you want if you're doing it manually, okay? And once you do that, you click replace, and I don't want to do that, but you click replace, and boom, it'll you're done, okay? So let's go and find something else. Metric formatting is very, very handy. What happens is you have a metric or a set of metrics that you need them to have, for example, a new formatting. Let's say you want them to be three decimal rather than two. Well, you have an option to do it manually, but let's say across this whole business area or this whole folder of metrics, you want it to become three decimal, not two decimal. So what do you need to do? You can either do it manually or you select them. Or in cases where you apply to all, but you know usually you don't apply to all. So you can go and select, you know, your subset of metrics. Let's say count metrics. Let's say all my count metrics for some reason need to have no decimal, and they had a decimal or something like that. You know, so I'm saying, okay, here's the subset update. It's selected by default. You could clear all or select all, and then I say, okay, well. I want to base it on this one metric or I want to specifically set it up to have I'm expand here to have values and format and I'm going to say they're all going to be of a type fixed and they're all going to have zero decimals for instance so, so, so what happens is now if I hit replace all of these will have that zero decimal if they didn't have it already okay and again, you could modify the header formatting as well, not just the value, okay? This is very useful when you're making big changes, obviously. Graph fonts, this is the fonts associated with a graph, just simply the types of the fonts, okay? This is very uh, useful when you're changing all across the board again. Export options, again, when you're doing massive changes in your export options, so let's say, you want to change all your appearance to include report title for all existence. You say okay, and apply it to set set or all. And you know, obviously, if you put all and update summary, you're gonna have to wait 
this is slow when you have a big project so be patient have enough uh, time to do this because when you update all you're gonna wait for a long time to for this tool to bring in all the reports and it might crash actually too depending on the memory you have set up uh, and here's uh, the last one which is the most useful one for most architects and so this one is the one I use frequently so what it happens is I have a filter for instance that I need to replace so again I'm gonna select one of these now notice there's custom group attribute metric template filter grid well I use filters a lot but sometimes you want to replace a prompt and there is no option to replace a prompt which is why I encourage you to always create a prompt place it inside a filter before you even use the filter uh, the prompt because what happens is when you do try to replace prompts across the board you can't do it with the finer place so I always take the precaution to always embed my prompts in filters before I drop them on any report that way if I need to replace them across the board I can simply come to use this tool and replace the filter okay if you don't understand what I'm talking about then you probably have don't need to worry about it but if you're having problems with replacing prompts across the board this is you know a good time for you to reflect on how you're creating prompts and embedding them always embed prompts in a filter before you embed the prompt in the report just just place the filter in the report okay same thing goes for derived metrics creating derived metrics is cool on the fly but when you want to do something like this sweep across you can't see them here okay and uh, so let's do this let's go for filters See time selection filters. All right, select a month. Open. All right. So here I chose the select a month, and I want to see all those that depend on select a month. Okay. Again, let me bring this up. Okay. So I'm update the summary. There we go. So there's four objects that depend on this filter. And if you don't know what the object is. You could expand this here to get a better view. Scroll. So they're all reports. One, two, three, four reports that are depending on this filter. So it's not embedded in other filters or metrics. So you say, okay, well, you know, for these two only, I might want to replace this with a different filter. I want to select a quarter rather than a month. You really have to know what you're doing at this point because you can mess things up quickly. So for these two, or actually let's just do one, and I'm gonna replace. It'll give you a warning, do you want to? Because the result can be unusable, which we know. Boom, I'm done, okay? So now if I update the summary for this one, that one does not show up anymore. It does not use the month. So I'm going to close this. And we talked about the delete option. I think I enabled it. Just to touch on it quickly. Yeah, so let's enable it. So what does this do for you? Again, we talked about deleting with dependence. So let's go to a filter. Let's go to that month filter and say what if I wanted to delete it see say are you sure you want to permanently delete the filter select a month from the project so let's just go with this look at what happens because I have that option say you have chosen to delete the object which has four dependents you may choose to delete all dependent objects as well okay to see the list so here preview and it's showing you the description. So do you want to delete the dependents as well? You can say delete all or cancel. Okay? So, and thanks again, and we'll see you in another demo.